Rebecca Madsen. She's the Chief Consumer Officer at United Healthcare. And Namish Patel, he's VP of Business Development at Rally Health. Thank you both for joining me. Happy to be here. All right, the digital transformation, I think, is really an opportunity for payers like yourself. And, I mean, you get a lot of data, you manage a lot of data. So let's start with you. You're the Chief Consumer Officer. What does a consumer want? So if we think of who the consumer is in healthcare today, I'm going to start by asking you guys a question. So theoretically, you all work in healthcare, you're interested in healthcare. How many of you would feel comfortable getting on the stage, defining the terms copay, coinsurance, deductible, and out-of-pocket max? Just, just raise your hand. <laughs> okay, so, so that's good, okay. So you, it looked like about 15%. 9% of people can define those four basic terms. And so when we look at where the consumer is today and we say, okay, we're building all these amazing things that you see uh, you know, in the Digital Health Summit. We're doing all these incredible things, but our consumers are at, our, are at a very fundamental level in terms of their desire to engage. We know, for example, 25% of people would rather lose their mobile phone than go through open enrollment. 28% would rather have their teeth cleaned. So when you look at who are popular, they can go through open enrollment, checking a couple boxes. They're reasonably disengaged, and if you build it, they will come really doesn't work. So when we say, where are they engaged? They are, people are checking their phones 221 times a day. We know that 32% of people are now shopping through digital channels for healthcare. That was 14% about five years ago. And 28% of people go directly to the internet as their first source of information on their health. So they're sick. They don't call their doctor. They don't call their friends. About a quarter of people go there. So that's why digital is so important in healthcare, because you take a disengaged population that kind of doesn't care, and you get them where they are, which is using their phones, looking at digital. Yep. I know that breath of having to deal with open enrollment. So. Yeah. Damish, tell me, then all of that's on you. How do you make this happen? So what we do at Rally is fundamentally one simple thing, which is put health in the hands of the consumer. And what that really translates to is two tasks. One is, how do I keep you out of the health system? And what that really means is prevention and intervention. So how do I keep you from getting sick or having a health need? And when you have a health need, how do I make sure that I help you solve that in the most efficient and simplest way possible? And then when you have to actually access the healthcare system, how am I helping you find care, price care, pay for care? And so one of the things that we have is now 30 million members who are on our platform who are using our tools. And what that translates to is a new expectation. So we all have expectations of what consumer health should be because we have regular consumer apps that we're using, right? We're on Google, we're on Facebook, we're doing all these things. We always wonder how come healthcare can't be that way? And that's what we're fundamentally solving. And that really is about integration and then using the data that we have to educate us on what people like me might want. And it's been much more difficult to do in healthcare because it's not as easy to share the data. The data is fragmented. The experience you have as a consumer gets fragmented uh, as you use the system. Right, and there are a lot of challenges, of course, of, of aggregating that, that fragmented data. So, and to me, I mean, one of the toughest things to do, you would think would be simple, is just finding a physician that's, uh, that's in your network. And so walk us through, what do we see? How do we resolve that and make it easier? So one of the things that we're doing is, typically what used to happen is that there was no real-time connection between like something as simple as a physician directory. So what happened is like on a quarterly basis, someone would say, like, Who, where are my contracts? What we're doing now is we're doing all that in real time. Uh, the next phase of that is instead of looking at like regional averages or something like that, we're looking at actual contracted rates. So this is where we use consumer technology partnered with one of the nation's largest payers, United Healthcare, to really get at what is the most accurate estimate. Because it's not, it's not easy in healthcare to say, well, you know, a visit's going to cost $80 or $120 or $150, right? You've got to be more accurate than that. Right. So we're solving that issue. And then when we get into then, how do I make sure just that uh, the data that I'm getting or the information I have on a specific provider who's in network who should be able to take new patients is accurate? Um, I think we've all probably gone through a process where we want to find a doctor and then we call a number and the number is disabled, right? So it's really simple things, but that's fundamentally what we're solving is the real-time integration of 
both the payer and the provider, and we sort of sit in between that to service the consumer. And, and I'll give one, one other example. Um, so if you go back to people being very basic and people I say, what can I do to control my health care costs? We know about 60% of what drives people's experience is cost and coverage. And so we say stay in network. I can't tell you how many times people come up to me and they're going, my health care costs are out of control. I say, are you using in-network doctors? And they say, well, I don't know, I think I am. I have no idea if I am. So what we did recently is we know people go online to search for a provider. Now if you search for a provider and that provider's out of network, so we say Dr. Patel is out of network, we will say this doctor may be out of network and there's an option to then click and find three providers in network in your zip code. And we've had about a 30% redirection rate that's beneficial for our clients, it's beneficial for the consumer. People just didn't have the information and they weren't doing the work. So keeping things really simple for people has been an area that we've seen that's been very helpful for our consumers. <clears throat> so as Namish mentioned, there's really two areas. This managing the, the morass and also managing your own health. And yeah. so, I mean, you know I'm a fan of the Motion Fit program. Yeah. I just showed you I need to take a 300 step walk, actually, yeah. I'm due. <laughs> um, but, uh, so, I mean, that is a, that's a terrific example. And so take us through that program, make sure everybody's aware of it. Yeah, so United Healthcare Motion is where you can take your wearable device and you can get credits up to, it depends on the program or your, that your employer offers, but for argument's sake, about $1,000 in financial incentives for doing things like, exactly like you do, Mike, like taking steps and, and tracking them and walking. And we know 25% of people already have fitness trackers. So it's an easy way for us to plug in something that people are already doing for people to earn financial incentives, and it's in 40 states now, we've paid out almost $20 million in incentives um, for people actually just using a program like it. So again, what we're trying to do is meet people where they are with experiences that they're already undertaking and plug that into their health and into the healthcare system in easy ways. <clears throat> right, and it's, I mean, it's a little bit more sophisticated than just 10,000 steps, yep. but it's, uh, it, you know, it really takes on the sitting is the new smoking thing. It, it, does, it does exact change. Yeah, and we know, we know incentives work, right? Money right. talks that maybe you would buy your Fitbit and you'd use it for a couple of weeks and then you'd be, forget it. But because you know you're earning an incentive, that incentive tied to something that is your wearable device really causes people to go from it being a fad to actually using it for their health. Right. Right, I earned over a thousand dollars last year on the program. Actually, monopoly <laughs> money, but uh, I'm just not an evaluator. So, what other kinds of programs? I mean, I, I I love it because it's really the first thing since smoking that you know where you're kind of tiering costs for lifestyle choices. Yeah. And it, so, what do you think is next? What, what can we look for? So, what's next for us is really the development of an ecosystem. So, we've, we're kind of uh, pretty far down this path, and the idea here is that there are going to be a, there's going to be a large proliferation of all of these digital health therapeutics, all of these coaching programs, um, any possible way you can think of to measure your health, manage your health, uh, do something to improve your lifestyle. What we're building is essentially the idea that we're agnostic to all of those things. What we're looking for market-wide is to measure the, the value, right? So where's the efficacy, what things really work? And we're in a very unique position. We have you know, claims information on, on, on millions of people. We have the, con the consumer interface. And what we're doing now is finding ways to find the things that really work and distribute them at a large scale. And for the things that are new, test and learn and iterate. And, that seems very fundamental for anyone who's in software development or anyone who's built a product before. But for the first time, we're now able to do that at scale in healthcare, which is, you know, if I want to lose weight, if I want to quit smoking, there are probably 50 companies that do each of those two things. So how do we look at all of those and see what's the best process that's going to work? Yeah, and it's not only, um, I mean, it's not only at scale, but at, at speed. That's the thing. I mean, healthcare does that today, but you know, you get a medication, you go home, and six weeks later, you go back to the doctor, how's it going? You can speed that up tremendously. And what's yeah. interesting about that is our, um, and it's interesting to say about, to me about speed, right? When we started, um, it took us four years to integrate something like earning your incentives and taking a survey and doing a walking challenge. And now it takes us 
two weeks to iterate on that. So there's this continuing acce acceleration. Um, healthcare probably was a little bit slower to start than a lot of other industries, but we're catching up and we're catching up really quickly. And, and what I would say is in terms of what's next is becoming a lot more sophisticated about understanding people at a one-to-one -one level. If you think of your health benefits at a simple level, you may get a newsletter, you may get a broad <coughs> communication. How do we use the power of the information that we have. If we know somebody is likely to be a detractor based on these criteria, how do we reach out to them? And how do we know where people are in their healthcare journey and stop them from doing things that they didn't even know they were gonna do? So take out of network again. You're about to go out of network. We know that because a doctor will do an eligibility check. We will then send you a note and say, we see you're likely to go out of network. Can we help you stay in network? And so it's about becoming a lot more personal through the use of data and analytics and sort of one-to-one -one connection so that healthcare becomes pretty much like any other industry and using that to simplify the experience and make it relevant for you so you don't get lost in that, you know, people that would rather get their teeth cleaned. Right. <laughs> it, it seems to me one of the things that's sort of in the way of that is managing proactive and, and privacy because mm -hmm. you, the more access you get, the more proactive you can be, mm -hmm. the, the more my data is in others' hands. Yep. So how do, you, how do you balance that? It's part of it's a trust issue, yes? Yeah, so, a lot, so when we do things, people have to opt into programs. There's a, a lot around HIPAA protection um, about the release of information. We always, security is in, extremely important to us across the board protecting people's personal health information. Of course, because of HIPAA, we do it, but it's incredibly important to us. So what we try and do is really work to educate people so that they opt into the programs that we have. Make sure we have the right information, simple things. Email and phone number. You wouldn't believe the number of people that will enroll and give us the wrong cell phone number so we can't even reach out to them. <laughs> so again, you know, when we're doing things like we have an online, um, a digital sort of onboarding tool, and in that onboarding tool, we take the basic information and we ask people to opt into programs, and we make it very clear to them so that they are aware and they know what, they're in, what programs they're in, what they've authorized and what they haven't authorized, so we built it into all these programs that we're doing. Okay. What sort of data is coming next? What, uh, what can we look forward to? So for us, it's going to be a combination of two things. It's going to be looking at all of the, the different programs and applications that are now um, being adopted by both providers and plan sponsors, right? So think about, you know, all, all of your employers that are essentially funding your health care. They're all adopting different things, and we want to learn from those things. We're going to figure out what, what's going to work. Um, the next piece, though, for us is really looking at the provider system, right? So Rebecca talked about staying in network is one of the most valuable things you can do. Well, it's not just about staying in network as one piece, but how do I make that the easiest, most efficient, most consumer-friendly choice? So how are we making sure that when you find care, when you price care, when you pay for care, it happens simply, it happens online, and it happens on your phone so that you don't have to go through a, a long phone call or anything like that. So reducing that friction in the healthcare experience is very important for us. And that's what we're using data for. Um, it's really all about how do you make a better consumer experience that's on par with what you expect and anything else that you do. Right, okay. We're, we're getting short on time. Rebecca, what can't you believe I didn't ask you? Um, I guess, you know, at the end of the day, if you guys are thinking about all the programs and projects and companies and, and things that you're doing. Remember a couple things. In, in the commercial space, two-thirds of people don't even interact with the healthcare system. They're what I call cough, cold, flu. You know, they go to the doctor very infrequently. So we, we tend to look at the high-cost populations, but as people go through their entire life and they go through their healthcare journeys, they're in and out of the system. So Think of what you're doing for the people who actually have acute or chronic issues, but also the other two-thirds of the population, and really figure out how you can continually understand and make things easy. Don't overcomplicate things, and don't think, if you build it and it's super cool, that people are going to engage with you. Really understand who the end consumer is. Okay, good. Mamish? Well, what I would say is for a lot of the people here, I, I've noticed uh, many people who are building a health tech device or building a digital therapeutic of some sort, really what all this comes down to is focus on integration. So um, there are companies like Rally who essentially are a front door for millions of people. So when you build your solution, 
what part of this creates value. And the faster you get to a value story, the faster you'll get that adoption. But key pieces when you architect your solution is, how are you sharing data? How are you making sure that the enrollment process you have is seamless? Um, how are you making sure that the consumer experience it will be integrated with the things that payers and employers are doing? Um, these are simple fundamental things, but when I look at any category, what you'll see is um, in you know, any category of health, there may be 50 or 60 companies in any single category, but what you'll find is that maybe there are three that are, that are really focused on those things who are driving that value. So there's a lot of people doing things, but the key is how do I do things that are gonna get the distribution and adoption that's necessary to make a change. Right, okay. On that note, thank you all for joining thank us. You. Appreciate it. Thank you.